what were these cans originally, Peter? Uh, these cans are um, what we call uh, Deltec Bandpass UHF filters. I'll just go and grab one and show you. Here is a BPD-435, that's the model. These are no longer manufactured. They were made by, oh, they yeah. were, were made by a company called Deltec in, in Wellington. Wellington. That's right. Um, back they used at, to make all the stuff for the New Zealand Post Office. That's right, and the serial number starts with the, the date, so 90, so that was made in 1990. So I've had two plates of these where there was um, cavities on the plates and um, I have modified them. Now these actually originally were bandpass, which means that they only pass a specific frequency that this tuning right. is yep. actually um, aligned to. This tuning <laughs> shaft actually goes in and out and actually lengthens or shortens this cavity. the cavity, uh, the inner, the inner yeah. tube inside and it, it, at a certain resonant frequency. Once you've got where you want, you can lock it up. Mm. So we've actually used six for the repeater and uh, there are um, there's two bandpass like this one, and the reason why we've used bandpass, one in the transmitter and one in the receiver, is is so that we actually keep our signal out of any adjacent other radio equipment that might be on the site. And the other advantage is, is that we keep the other site equipment out of ours. So that's the that's the uh, that's the advantage of bandpass. Band yes. Yep. Yeah. So, so we've got you've got a uh, an arrangement here of three of those. These two cans here have been modified. Yep. And you've modified that to be high pass. Yep. That's your receive aerial going into that port there. Yep. And there's your band pass that you were speaking about before. Yep. And that is the the port for the receiver itself on the yep. on the gear. Yep. And, the, and then, the way the way that the way that the band pass is actually configured, as you know, Paul, is that you put your your energy in here. And you take it out of there, so that could be the aerial on that side, um, and the and say the transmitter on that side, or yep. the receiver on that side, and the aerial on that side. So, um, so yeah, we only pass what signal, what frequency we want to pass. However, the other two are arranged as what's called a T pass or a notch yep. uh, filter. So you'll notice yep. that there's no in and out. So and you've you've taken these two ports out. Yes. So these these two ports that, that appear here were in there. Yeah. And and there and yep. that can, and what's on the end of here? That's a okay. I've drilled I've drilled another hole in each of these cans, and in there is another pickup loop. Right. And it's actually a loop of a copper strip that's about um, 45 millimeters long, and it essentially is soldered from the center pin of the socket, in a round in a loop, and is soldered back to to the ground or the earth part of the plate. The, the, the plate being in there a little small uh, uh, like a, uh, a, a copper washer that the socket is soldered onto and that whole thing is soldered together. Now what I've actually done here is I have made the the um, the loop arrangement so that it can be rotated uh, in the can to provide the optimum um, performance of the filter. That means right. the, dis the difference between our our uh, transmit and receive or receive and transmit depending upon where we use this, this particular um, notch and once we actually get that sweet spot there's three screws here that we lock up and that's a plate that, that bears down on that um, pickup loop uh, socket and actually locks it in place so you'll actually find that the loop is approximately sticking out this way at almost uh, almost perpendicular to the center here right. uh, so you're actually tuning Two things, if you like, when you tune one of these that's, filters. That's right. You're tuning the the loop as well as the yeah. the plunger. That's yeah. right. The plunger actually changes the frequency at which the uh, the notch um, and the pass operate, and the loop itself changes what's called the coupling ratio uh, between the center tube and the coax cable. Yeah. So essentially, what these are, are suck out, suck out notches. They actually remove this, the adjacent signal in the repeater. So for instance, these are the receive filters, or the receive uh, notches, uh, sorry, the receive bandpass filters here, and the notch inside them actually sucks out or removes 
any uh, of the transmitted signal from the transmitter and vice versa on the transmitter over here. Right. It actually sucks out the frequency of the receiver. Receiver. Yeah. Yep. It's so that they can they don't actually create any mutual interference with each other. Right. So again, receiver. on this transmit side, you that's where the that's where the transmit aerial goes and that port there. Yep. This is uh, low pass, single single loop. Yep. These are tuned lengths too, aren't they? Yes, they are. Yeah. And that, that's tune that's length? That's a tune length as well. Okay, and then... One, th th these are not tuned lengths here. Yeah, that's not a tuned length, no. nor this. No. Okay, and then this is uh, typically band the band pass. Yeah. And so, th so this one here is unmodified? Yes, that's correct. Yeah, yeah. The band pass filters are unmodified. Yeah. And the, the frequency, the tune frequencies of these are designed to reject because that's the transmit side designed to reject the receive side. That's correct. And the receive side of these two is designed to reject the transmit. Transmit, that's correct. Yeah. So that gives you, um, between the two, um, as much isolation as you can between transmit and receive. Yep, uh, uh, an absolute measured value um, on either string of filters is uh, the isolation for a single string is 50 dB. Mm. Uh, we actually have a we we need to have somewhere between 85 and 90 dB of isolation between send and receive or transmit and receive, um, so as the the transmitter does not desensitise the receiver when, when it's on site, yeah. and we achieve the balance of 50 uh, by spacing the the transmit and receive antennas on the pole vertically spaced as far apart as we can, right. and in this case. Um, we've spaced them three meters apart and that yeah. provides us with enough isolation together with the filters for the system to perform without any desensitization. Yeah. So we'll get an opportunity to have a look at the aerial arrangement on the pole for this little project. So we're at Pete's place and we've just come here to have a look at the testing that Pete's done on the uh, PRS aerials that are going to be erected for this PRS uh, repeater which is going to be at Brindouin. So we've got a pair of antennas at the top with a combining harness. Uh, you may not be able to see that combining harness. Um, Around this side you might. And then come down here, there's another pair of aerials down here and you can probably see the combining harness on this lower set. Everything's nicely taped up to keep the water out. And it's three meters <coughs> between the aerials. And correct me if I'm wrong, Pete, the top set will be the transmit. Transmit, yep. transmit on the top and receive on the bottom. And the reason why we put the transmit on the top is to try and keep the, the sort of the hot RF off the mast and the other cables that are, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> the other cables that are going up the mast. Um, to try and keep the isolation between these uh, aerials as great as possible. And we just uh, got a couple of cables here. Pete's doing a little sort out session here. One is LMR 400 and the other one is RG213. We're going to do a little comparison between the two. The LMR 400 has got way less loss than the RG213. So, uh, what and, we're and that's largely not... that's largely because of its dielectric, isn't it? Yes. Yes. And so. we're, going, we're going to do an isolation test between the two antennas as they stand. Yeah. The spectrum analyzer and tracking generator. Every person who who plays with radio needs one of these. No excuses. There we are. So it's so already, just an it's audio term so that we can hear. It's an SV4401A handheld yep, yep. vector network analyzer from 50 kilohertz to 4.4 gigahertz. With the current um, exchange rate, X uh, China is about 600 New Zealand dollars delivered. Can we just support that? Just no, no, this one. It's right. It gets totally robust. It won't go anywhere. Do this with your Nano VNA. Okay, so theoretically, we've got it somewhere around a forty, averaging forty-five 
Wow, well, it's a bit hit and miss, isn't it? That car just went past. Remember I told you the other day that when cars go down the road it changes the, <laughs> the isolation. So we're actually around, If we could actually average it if I want to. So we've got times one averaging. So if we do a times five average and just wait for a, a minute, that should give us a, a reasonable idea using this particular instrument what the um, isolation is going to be between antennas. Well there we are, we're looking at probably around 50 d 52 dB of isolation. It's fantastic isn't it? Well it's actually far better than what I thought. Yeah. I thought if I could get 30 dB that would be really really good. Yeah. This is kind of, this is even better. <laughs> 